In today's video, I'll guide you through the basics of Filmora 14 and show you the essential tools and features you need to start editing your videos. If you're already familiar with other video editing software and want to get comfortable with Filmora, this video is for you. So without any further ado, let's jump right in. Before we start, I want to let you know that there will be a link in the description of this video where you can download and install Filmora 14. We've already covered what this software is and why it's a powerful tool in a previous video. If you want to see that, there'll be a card you can check out. When you first open Filmora 14, you're going to be welcomed by this screen, where you can create a new project by choosing the aspect ratio of your video 16x9 and 9x16 being the most common formats. You also have other formats available here. Then you can click on New Project to start, so let's look at the interface. Here on the left side, you can import all of your media, then here you can play back your clips. This is called the Player Panel. Here you have the timeline where you're going to work on everything, and here you have all the effects and the settings you need to modify your clips. So let's go ahead and import something into the project. I'm going to import all of these videos from this folder. So I'll select all of them and hit open. We're going to be asked to create proxy files. Don't worry about that for now, just click on no. And here on the left, you can click on a clip to view it in this preview window. You can move frame by frame backward or forward, and easily navigate through your clips before you add them into the project. You can also crop it directly from here using mark in and mark out. And then you also have different settings like inserting clips at the end, changing the settings of the clip, taking a screenshot, changing the volume, or even making the preview window full screen. Let's go ahead and drag a clip and drop it into the timeline where we will be handling most of the video editing work. To play the video, press spacebar if you've used other video editing software before, the timeline in Filmora will feel pretty familiar, so you should adjust to it quickly. Let's add one more clip to the timeline. When you do that, Filmora will ask if you want to keep the current project settings. For now, let's choose to keep the settings. Now that we've got two videos playing back to back, we can start making cuts. To do that, use the split button. When you click it, it'll make a cut exactly where the playback head is. You can drag the timeline like this to zoom in and zoom out. If you move the clips and leave an empty space, you are then able to remove that by clicking on this X icon right here. You can undo or redo any change by using these two arrows. Let's add another clip and once again, choose to keep the project settings. This time, let's also check the box so it doesn't ask us again. When you add the clip, it creates a new video track above the existing one. You can make a cut using this button here and then click this icon to delete the unwanted part. You can also move clips between video tracks, and if there's any empty space left behind, just remove it by pressing the bin icon. Let's drag the playhead to the beginning of the timeline to see what we've got so far. Now let's take a closer look at the toolbar, starting from the left and working our way to the right. The first button lets you customize the toolbar, you can add whatever tools you use most for easier access. Next, you can change how the mouse cursor behaves in the timeline. Right now, it's set to select, but you can switch to quick split to make cuts, or use select all forward and all backward to grab multiple clips at once. You've probably seen similar tools in other editing apps. Then you can undo and redo changes, then the delete and trim buttons, and a button to add text. Let's add some quick text to see how it works. Once it's on the timeline, you can click on it in the preview window and start typing whatever you want to customize it. You can also drag it around in the preview to adjust its position. If you want to add another video track, just right click in the timeline and select add video track. You can do the same for audio, right click on an audio track and choose add audio track. Moving on with the toolbar, you can add shapes using this icon right here. Let's go ahead and select an arrow, then draw it in the player panel. You can move it to where you want and resize it by dragging the corners. If you scroll up in the timeline, you'll see where the element is placed. You can also adjust the size of these panels by clicking and dragging between them so you can customize your workspace however you like. You can also add a rectangle, an ellipse, a triangle, and a line with this tool. Next, you've got the option to generate background music with AI, but that's a more advanced feature, so we'll save it for another time. For now, let's focus on this stopwatch icon where you can control the speed of your clips. This lets you slow down your footage, and it will automatically adjust the position of the other clips in the timeline. You can also speed up a clip, like this one. 
let's choose 4x. To tweak the speed further, click the arrow next to the clip. From there, you can adjust it to be faster or slower, and the timeline will update automatically to reflect those changes. Now you can also add a freeze frame, which is basically going to keep a still image of that exact moment where you froze the frame. So let's try that on the first video. I'm going to click here and add freeze frame, and you can see that it's going to show where the video is playing normally and where there is a freeze frame. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to erase that, click on the space, and then click X here to remove the gap and bring everything together. Keep in mind that it won't move all the clips, just the ones on that specific track. Moving on in the toolbar, you've got some additional settings. Some are AI related, but we won't get into those in this video. The rest are pretty useful. You can add markers, record a voiceover, enable quick preview mode, zoom to fit the timeline, or zoom in and out using this slider right here. If you want to see the audio meter, just click here, and this will show you how loud the audio is. Right now, we don't have any music in the timeline, so let's add something. Go to Import Media, click the plus button, and then browse for your music. I'm going to open this song called Ashes. If you have multiple clips, it's easier to just search for it using the search bar. So let's type in the name of the song, and it should show up right away. Now you'll want to drag the song and drop it into an audio track. Next, let's make a cut since we don't need the entire song. Go ahead and delete the extra part, then adjust the length as needed. When you select the audio clip, you'll see various audio settings appear on the right side. You can adjust all the basic audio settings here, like volume and sound balance. You can also add a fade in or fade out, along with a few other options. If you select a video track instead, you'll see a different set of settings tailored to video. For example, you can change the scale, adjust the position, rotate or flip the clip horizontally or vertically, even rotate it 90 degrees if that's what you're looking for. Here you can also choose the blend mode and you can fill the background with a blurred version of the video, a solid color, or a pattern, which is pretty cool. You can also add simple animations like a fade in or fade out to your videos from this animation tab. Let's drag a preset onto the timeline to see how that works. You'll notice we have a fade in effect on the second clip these keyframes control how the transition is applied. Another way to add transitions is through the top left window. But before we get into the transitions tab, let's quickly explore what else is available in this window. First, you've got your media tab, where you can import all of your own footage. You also have access to Filmora's stock media library. There's a collection of different backgrounds you can use in your videos, including categories like solid color, motion backgrounds, gradients, dark backgrounds, liquid style visuals, and nature clips. There's a wide variety to choose from, depending on the style of your project. You'll find things like cinematic clips, vertical backgrounds for TikTok, YouTube-specific assets, promotional content for online stores, and many, many more. Next, in this tab, you can generate custom sounds using AI. Just type a prompt, and Filmora will create something for you. You can even base it on the mood of your video, which I think is really fun. Now, let's move on to the titles section. Here you'll find tons of presets to add text to your project. Everything is customizable. Just drag a title into the timeline, select it in the preview window, double click, and start typing your own text. You can then customize the settings using the panel on the right. Now moving on to what I mentioned, here we have a collection of transitions. Filmora has a ton of them. You've got simple ones like dissolve, which works like a basic fade, and more dynamic ones like fast wipe or warp zoom. To use them, just drag and drop a transition between two clips and preview the effect. If it's too long, you can change the duration on the right side. Let's set it to 17 milliseconds. You'll find tons of transition options like glitches, flashes, slides, and so many more. They're all organized into categories on the left. Moving on, if you head over to the effects tab, you can drag and drop visual presets directly onto your clips. Let's try out this one and see how it changes the look of our clip. There's also a gallery of color filters available to change the look of your video, a big collection of stickers, and also some templates to easily edit your videos. The last thing I want to show you is how to export your project. Just click the export button at the top right. You can choose how you want to save your video, locally, for a device, directly to social media, or even onto a DVD. I'm going to choose local. From here, you can name your project, 
choose the save location, and select a preset. I'll go with custom, then pick a format, MP4 is the most common. You can also adjust the quality, which affects the file size, then the resolution, frame rate, and a few other settings. Once everything looks good, just click export. Hopefully that helped you feel more comfortable navigating the Filmora interface and gave you the confidence to start editing your videos with a better understanding of the basic tools. In a future video, we'll explore more advanced techniques like color grading, speed ramping, masking, and more AI features to speed up your workflow, so stay tuned for that. If you want to continue learning, check out this other video on the screen. Thank you, and see you next time. This is Creative Society.